G'day everybody and welcome to Andrew's Art and Model. Today I have a little Ravel 172nd scale Horton Geo 229. Uh, this is an older kit, it's been around for a little while. It's certainly not one of Ravel's best kits, but uh, it is a bit of fun to build. So we're just going to uh, go through this and have a play around and, and just enjoy ourselves for a change. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see how this goes. I actually really enjoyed this little kit and uh, we'll cover that more as we go. And for now, I'm just going to shut up. The assembly on this kit is rather straightforward and simple. There's not a lot of pieces and it all goes together reasonably well. The parts you can see there in the background, just the engine parts, so I've got those all ready to paint and uh, we'll do most of the painting and then put it all together and I wasn't quite sure what you would and wouldn't see once it was together so I paint most of the interior up uh, quite well. Most of it's not needed though as you'll see. And here you see I am getting the colours ready for the undercarriage. So it's basically similar colour to an RLM 74, like the light green that they used to use. Pretty certain it was 74. But I just decided I just wanted it, yeah, just to be different. Why not? Let's just make it a different shade, have a bit more fun. Um, at the end of the day, there was only two vehicles, uh, only two of these aircraft manufactured, I believe, and they didn't get past prototypes. So who's to say what colour they were going to be in the in real life but uh, yeah just a bit of fun I stick with the normal XF 63 uh, German grey for the the uh, cockpit and the rest of the details there
Now, joining the fuselage halves together was a bit tricky. They don't really want to go together very well. So lots of clothes pegs used in this stage. The same with the wings, a uh, fair bit of glue, lots of clothes pegs. And then when you're attaching them to the main body, you can see those little located tabs on the sides there. They're just, it, it's not a snug fit. Uh, there's a lot of movement in there. So you just gotta be really careful when you're putting it together. Now this uh, guide tape was something I picked up from uh, a Gundam video I watched and I thought, yeah, I'm going to try that because I've been using a few different materials and uh, this is a sort of purpose built for this job. So I put this on the wings here and I'm using it just to guide the scribing tool. I just want to make those little lines where the flaps are and the ailerons are just a little bit deeper. Uh, I just, yeah, I think they just look a bit too shallow, just a bit nicer with a bit more depth and detail on it.
Now you're probably wondering why I sprayed the top, the RLM 76. Uh, I have decided that I'm going to do my own paint scheme on this. I've always wanted to do like a mottled, spotty camouflage scheme. And I've, to be honest, I've avoided a lot of kits using this uh, simply because my airbrush is a cheap and nasty little budget airbrush. So this is really pushing my little airbrush to the limit. And uh, it was actually a lot of fun. I do make quite a lot of mistakes, but you'll see I've just made one on the front there uh, with overspray. Just leave it. There's nothing you can do about it. Just leave it, let it be, come back and touch it up later. And uh, indeed, I'll go back over it with another light dust coat of uh, RLM 76 just to uh, soften up some of the areas where I made boo-boos. But uh, yeah, no, a lot of fun. And uh, my poor little airbrush did a, did a really good job.
Now one of the complaints you see on other build videos online and other reviews and things is the decals. They're actually really quite thick and uh, it can be quite annoying putting them down, especially on this little one here that's the uh, red dotted stripes along the wing. Uh, there is a raised section there and a few little bits and pieces just gets in the way. So you can see I cut out the first little bit off it and get it stuck to my thumb. Cut out the first little bit of it uh, just to put over that raised section there so I don't have any fit issues with it and uh, I don't have to worry about excess film. Uh, then with the little walkway stripes, I cut those into two uh, just to make that an easier job to lay down and it worked perfectly. So uh, yeah, I'd suggest doing that. If you're going to build this one, don't try and put it down as one big decal. Section it like I have and uh, put it down and it'll be much, much easier. Now, as you can see here, I've finished the decals uh, as per normal before I put them down and after I put them down, I make sure there's a nice coat of gloss clear on there. I use the TS-13 for the first coat. I just like that better with the decals and then I'll just use a Tamiya acrylic clear over the top of it. And uh, and that's because we're doing the uh, oil wash here. So if I was to use the TS-13, it would probably react with that paint uh, since it's lacquer based and I'm using uh, Terps as a thinner. So there's a good tip, use the acrylic one and uh, you won't have any issues.
so there we pretty much have it. I'm just doing a bit of weathering on it. I don't want it hugely weathered. Uh, if you are going to do a lot of paint chipping and everything, remember the wings on these were made from plywood and the center section was the was mostly aluminium. But uh, I wanted an aircraft that had seen some hours but you know, wasn't really heavily worn. And uh, I thought, yeah, that would be a bit of fun. So here I'm just removing a little tab on the aerial there. I could not tell on the instructions if that was meant to be there or not. It could be a part of the aerial, it could be just a bit of some flash. I'll just err on the side of caution and got rid of it. Uh, so it's up to you whether or not you want to keep it if it's on there. But uh, yeah, mine, it's gone. Now this part was really the only headache of the kit and I have to come back later and, and correct this. It's just the front of the canopy there, it just does not want to go on. There is very little area for it to sit on. And uh, using the canopy glue, the Formula 560 canopy glue as normal, but uh, it's just a little precarious area for that thing to sit on. Other than that, thoroughly enjoyable little build. I had a great time with this. I had enjoyed mucking around with the paint scheme. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, tell a friend, and uh, we'll keep this channel growing. I have more giveaways this year, of course, in 2020, as well as the premium subscriber giveaways, so don't forget about that. And uh, welcome to our new premium subscribers. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope you enjoy our builds.